There is this sense of energy and excitement when you come in the morning uh, uh, in, in, in our laboratories uh, dealing with the best equipment in the world, developing technologies, pushing the boundaries of the, what is possible today is uh, exciting and fascinating and it's, it's one of the best places to work in. There are definitely some areas where we have the world-leading technologies, where we are shaping and defining the future. One area is micro and nano manufacturing. This machine is the micro projection stereolithography. Because of the position and the build layers, in fact, that is only 15 micron layers, it's just moved little by little. It's the design um, is, is the limit, so you can build whatever you want. This is a focus ion beam scanning electron microscope system. It has the ability to fire a focus ion beam on a material, and what it allows you to do is to actually etch materials out at a resolution of four nanometers. And an example of that, uh, as a test case, is how we can actually etch onto a scale of a human hair. So, should we set up the, the head on display stuff? Human Factors is about the study of the way people work and interact with technology and others. We've got a dedicated simulation research laboratory that allows us to consider um, a number of different aspects of transport research. There hasn't been that much research looking at head-up displays in cars. There's been a certain amount of stuff, certainly nothing that's looked at the complexity and what impact it has on peripheral um, vision. It's cutting edge because we're here in the sort of in the driving simulator. It's a nice immersive high fidelity environment that you need in order to investigate these sorts of issues. Every day I sort of go to bed around about four o'clock in the morning trying to get more ideas on to how to do it and do it perfect. One of the major focuses within the entire division is that we don't focus purely on research and we don't focus purely on industry that we try and bridge that gap between the two. We have the latest automation technology available to ourselves, um, like robotic applications. Some of the work that is actually being done here links to some of the needs that Airbus or Rolls-Royce actually have in their production facilities, but they don't have the facility to actually develop that into an industrial process. We're interested in ensuring that we conduct good, strong empirical research, but that those results are transferable to an industrial context. And our projects in this area have ranged in their applications. So for example, one project is considering the way in which virtual prototypes can be used to replace physical prototypes. We interact with some of the best technologies in the world, which we have here, both on the technology side and also on the human factor side. So from that point of view, it's a very exciting place to work. What we're doing at the moment is the cutting of diamond. We've developed uh, some technology around the standalone film. We can uh, achieve a very accurate spacing um, of diamond crystals via laser ablation. I mean, it's an extremely expensive material to be working with. So uh, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. These particular ones can be used in um, micro grinding tools. We are among the first. Uh, building miniature machine tools which can uh, uh, accurately uh, machine uh, small parts. C360 degrees and B1990 on either side. Well, this is a five axis water jet. Uh, the water jet's a state of the art machine. It's a fantastic tool and it can cut anything. Um, there's nothing on this machine that we found we can't really cut. We had a bit of a problem with boron carbide, which was very, very tough, but uh, we can still cut it. The water is at very high pressure. It comes out at 2,000 miles an hour. We've got here the composite fuselage from the Hawker Beechcraft, and we've cut it in five axis to produce something that looks like that. The project that's coming on is a state-of-the-art project. It's a collaboration with some other universities where we've got the equipment, which is why we are allowed to have the running of the project. Our philosophy will be how we can choose the methods for controlling the depth uh, uh, penetration and supervise the machine. Yeah, I'm going to show the <laughs> We have various lasers. We have a um, state-of-the-art two kilowatt fiber laser. We can do many things like cutting and welding and heat treatment. So what we've got here is a laser microprocessing platform that we're integrating in-house. The principle is that we take a 100 watt fiber laser and couple it up with a very precise positioning system which delivers accuracy of 5 microns. Well it's very exciting and it's very challenging as well to live with different technologies and to learn different kind of processes and 
because in some areas you don't have that much information because you are leading the, the research. The reason that I came to work here was because of the setup. You want to be in the areas that you are the leader in the field. It's an even more rewarding once you actually get something to work that actually no one else has thought about. You know, so that, that you know, that for me it doesn't get better than that. And when you feel that certain things are making a, a real difference um, to the world we live in, then that's, you know, that's really motivating. You know that if you're putting your best into it and you've got the best machine supporting you, what you're delivering is the best that's possible. Yeah.